Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series finale, Mutant Apocalypse. Now, this episode is technically three episodes, but I figured I'd just use the Mutant Apocalypse thing because I feel like that really does cover it compared to using the three different titles. Um, I know it's obviously Mutant Apocalypse was the first part, and then I want to say Carmageddon was the second, and I can't remember uh, the third name there. But before I get into uh, this episode, which I guess... Yeah, I, I mentioned it was, you know, I, this whole season I've been doing Tales of the TMNT, but I feel like this was just, you know, I guess it's technically, yeah, I guess it's Tales of the TMNT. I don't know. I'm just going to put Ninja Turtles because it's, it's the series finale. I'll put the full name. Um, but before I get into this review, I actually wanted to take a minute and talk about Nickelodeon putting this on Nicktoons. And I might do a whole video on this. I don't know. You guys let me know if you'd be interested in that and what you guys think for sure. But I was thinking of doing a video just on the whole topic of how crappy I think this is, that this is a show that's been on for five seasons, like six years because of the weird scheduling and all the giant hiatuses we've had. It's been almost seven, I think. But it's been a show that I believe, I never really checked the statistics on it, but I always assumed that the Ninja Turtles was going strong. It's a huge franchise, and I've always thought, you know, the show is absolutely phenomenal. I always just assumed that it got good ratings and stuff like that. And to have it where, you know, we knew going into this season, I didn't realize that when the season first started, and there's still some people finding this stuff out, but, you know, before this season even really aired, it was like, yep, this is it, this is the last season, and we're going, we already know we're doing another 2D version of the Ninja Turtles series, which I'm definitely going to watch it. Whenever it comes out, I will be right there to be like, start right over, I don't even care. Um, but to do this, you know, and it's not like that's about to air in like two weeks or anything, and it's like, we don't want to confuse people, so we split the shows up. It's like, that's not coming out. There's no, not that I've seen at least an official release date. Um, I assume it's coming out next year. I don't think there's even an official release year uh, window for it. But to put this show that's been on for five seasons on Nicktoons, it's just insane. It's disrespectful, I feel. like It's so crazy that they would actually choose to do that. And then there's a million other issues that come with it. And the main issue, of course, um, is the fact that the series isn't, isn't even airing in order. Like, they put the actual series finale out and then during the series finale I'm watching it and it's like yeah next week we're going to be doing like the Halloween special so be sure to check those out I think it's supposed to be every Wednesday now um they're going to be doing I assume they're going to just be doing every arc is just going to be done in a night so I think they're pretty much all two episode arcs except for I heard the Bebop and Rock City thing was um a three episode arc so you know they might do a special event for that as well and then I know we have the well, one of the last episodes is going to do an, is going to be another crossover thing. That, that may or may not be the Bebop and Rocksteady thing, because I know they bring back Old Shredder, which I'm very curious how that's going to work, because I, I want to know who they get the voice to, um, who they get to do the voice for that. But, you know, it was just crazy. Like, this is supposed to be, this is the, you know, the final episode after everything was all said and done. And they're like, yeah, let's do the series finale, and then still show, you know, all the other episodes next week. So, I hate when stuff is aired out of order, and to bring back the show off of hiatus and then be like yep here's the series finale and then we'll do the other episodes in the coming weeks it's just like the most ridiculous thing in the world number two of course nicktoons which is of course the trash version of nickelodeon um can't even watch it in hd um the episode is online now but when it premiered and it, it makes sense because they want people to watch it on the actual channel but it's like this is the series finale for a show once again that's been on for five seasons and you put it on nicktoons which there is no HD version of Nicktoons. It does not matter what cable provider or package you have. Nicktoons is your standard definition. And it's like, how do you put a show like this on just the standard definition show? It's not even just 2D. It's 3D. Like, that's a lot more work even than the 2D animation, which that's already a ton of work. And they went 3D, which is why we always had the insane hiatuses for the show, because it takes even longer to do, you know, 3D. And it's just insane to me. It's like, first off, it's out of order. And then it's standard definition. You can, like I said, it's online now, so you can watch it in HD. But it was just insane. And it's just like, how do you know, where is the respect for this sort of show that you've had on for such a long time? It like blew my mind that this was how it was supposed to play out. Because when I heard that the Heidi's was coming back, I was like, oh, cool, they're doing a special thing. I just assumed it was on actual Nickelodeon. And then I looked some stuff up and it was like, nope, this is on Nicktoons. And I was like, wow, that is horrible. And then I heard that it was, you know, technically the season, the series finale. Because I was so confused, I was like, why are people saying it's a series finale? I know there are a bunch of episodes left, and it's because it's the actual series finale. So, it's just the craziest freaking thing. And like I said, I, I want to take some time out because I don't know, I'm not 100% sure if I'll ever end up doing a video. 
But I probably will because this isn't the first time I've experienced this with Nickelodeon because I watched uh, the Avatar show, so Legend of Korra, it was like, I had certain feelings of that too. But it was just crazy. I was like, this is a show that has been on for five years at least, has quite a few episodes. I think there's still like 10 episodes. or It's like almost 10 episodes after this are still uh, set to air. They're already being sold on DVD, like the Bebop and Rocksteady thing. Um, I saw, I think that was during the series finale as well, where it was like, hey, what, you know, buy it on DVD before it airs. So that's already finished. The Dracula stuff is already done, or all, all the monster things are already done. You can actually find a lot of these episodes on YouTube, but I was like, I'll actually at least watch them because I don't know what's cut or what's not cut to, you know, avoid um, copyright issues on YouTube. So I'll just watch the actual episodes as they air. But considering they did this, I don't know why they don't just put the episodes out online. I heard that they were, but they're not on the Nickelodeon website, not that I could find, but... Who knows, they might be there. The Nickelodeon website sucks too. Like even on that website, they don't have the numbers, the right numbers for the right episodes. Cause I was talking about that when the uh, Yojimbo stuff came out, they were like marked as like episodes 16, 15, 16 and 17, I believe. And before the Yojimbo thing, we were on like episode 11. So I was like, I have to go to the wiki. I can't even go to the actual Nickelodeon website to get the right number for episodes. And it's just insane. So once to do that, like I said, just talk about that before getting into the actual review of this because it really bugged me. It was just like, wow, that's it, that's just an insane amount of disrespect, especially considering they are actually going into another Turtles show. you think they'd be like, hey, let's make sure we keep, you know, the Turtles on Nickelodeon. Like, they're doing another show that's already been announced to people. So it's just, it's like, it's even crazy. It's almost stupid from a marketing perspective because it's like, well, if you get rid of the last month and a half worth of episodes um, from your main Nickelodeon channel, then you screw up when people are like, hey, the, you know, when you start to say there's another Ninja Turtle show coming out, it, it'll still bring more people over, especially younger, uh, you know, the younger audience. It'll kind of just keep it fresh in their mind. For me, obviously, I'm a huge fan, so it's automatic. I'm going to watch Ninja Turtles, but it's like from a lot of perspectives, it's dumb, but mostly I just felt it was insanely disrespectful with this show having been on for such a long time, and I would assume getting great ratings, you know, all the time, but... That's that. I think I will do an official video because I'm I'm just getting angry and angry about it. So I'll probably have a video about that up in a week or two or something like that. But to get into the actual episode review for these three episodes, it was cool. But I will definitely start off by saying I don't like that this was the ending to the series. I hate the fact that they made it a post-apocalyptic thing where everyone's dead. Like, it's canonical. It's not like this is, you know, like some people mentioned, I, I read some comments before, was like, maybe this is someone being thrown into an alternate dimension. Maybe something else is happening. And it seemed like it could possibly go that way, especially in the first episode, because Raph didn't have his memories. And I was like, hmm, this could definitely be like an alternate universe type of thing, or, you know, I, I didn't think they'd go the route where it was like, it ended up being a simulation the entire time. I was like, I don't think they'll do that. But it definitely sucked to me. I was like, man, this is dark. Like, we've had dark episodes before, especially if you watch the 2003 version. They had the episode, I think it was probably two or three episodes, where Mikey went to the future. And every time they go to the future, everybody's dead. That's like... The Ninja Turtles future is always apocalyptic, except for um, the Fast Forward series that was specifically meant to be like a normal future. But every time they go to the future, everybody's dead and stuff, and Mikey goes to the future, the turtles are all older, and like throughout that episode, I think each turtle ends up dying until it gets to like Mikey and like, one other turtle, and they end up, he ends up like changing the past. But, you know, they go into this, and it's just like, yep, everybody's dead. Um, somebody, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to assume it's the Krang. They don't ever actually talk about it. Because I was super curious. I was like, I almost want episodes about what happened. Because it's like this giant bomb goes off and everybody dies. And there's only mutants and things like that. And it was just interesting. I was like, how in the world is this going to play out exactly? But ultimately, it does end up being the actual canonical ending to the series, which is just insanely dark. Because it's like everything they went through... And it's just like, yeah, everybody's dead in the future. Like, that's all I'm going to think about. I'm not going to lie. Every episode that I watch after this, all I'm going to think is, this doesn't matter because everybody's dead. Like, it's super sad. Like, it's insanely dark. And I was like, man, it sucks that they made this, like, the canonical ending to this version of the series. The future is just desolate, a desolate wasteland where everyone's been killed off. Um, Casey, April, and Karai, um, Shinigami, I would assume, like, all of them are dead. They, you know, there's... It was only three episodes, so they could have put that stuff in there if they were doing, like, a crazy... I mean, it could almost be, like, a full season by itself where they dive into the fact that, you know, Karai, of course, being able to control her mutation, she probably could have survived and would have been fine if she wasn't near the blast. Other characters uh, being mutated, Shinigami, April, Casey would have had to have been mutated 
little stuff like that. Um, they definitely could have gone into it if they wanted to, but of course it was just the three episode series finale, so it was just like, we just assume everybody's dead. So it starts off with Raph, um, and he's the only survivor, and then Donnie is surviving because his mind was put into um, a new turtle bot, which I thought was really cool. It was a great design. I thought it, was, it looked really sweet. Um, but it's the two of them. They're doing, you know, Mad Max thing. So they're going along. It's the super dark future. He, you know, I guess he got mutated extra so he was able to grow hair even as a reptile. Um, so, you know, they go through and it's, you know, it's super dark and desolate and they need gas and everything. It's truly Mad Max. And so as they're going along, they get into a couple fights. After they get out of this first fight, they end up going to a, a gas station where Raph gets knocked out by, I want to say she was a, a meerkat, I believe it was. And she has like this electric whip. And so she she knocks him unconscious, steals the ride. Ultimately, Donnie ends up waking up from like his sleep mode. He takes her out and then, you know, he goes and he gets Raph. So that's when they start to get into like this lesson of this girl is tattooed. This is who like the main villains were looking for and stuff. Where it's like we're looking for a girl with a map. And she ends up being like this girl who's going to lead them to Oasis. And I always thought something was going to happen where they would be like, oh, the map was like a subway system. Because that's what it looked like to me. It was like blue and yellow and red. And I was like, that's definitely just like a subway system map. But it ended up being an actual map to Oasis. So I was very surprised by that. Um, but, you know, of course, that's what kind of leads things into, like, this crazy adventure for these next three episodes. So it starts off really simple, and they're going through, and they go, once they do their first big fight, it leads into the ending where she's like, I'm looking for this specific person who everyone calls the Holy Chalupa. And once that happened, it was like, holy crap, Mikey's alive. So that adds an extra one of the turtles back into the fray. They, of course, end up finding him. They also end up finding, uh... Chompy as well as Ice Cream Kitty, which I thought was very cool. It was like, oh, they're adding more and more characters that are still alive within this uh, universe, or I guess just within the future. And so, you know, they're going for it. He has, like, this pizza shop, and they have, you know, the final episode of the, you know, the, the Star Trek show. I forgot what it's actually called, but of course it's the Star Trek show. And so they go through, and they're watching, like, this final episode and everything, and I love that, of course, the dude slapped him, like, that's, like, their classic thing, like, the guy, the one dude freaks out, and then the captain, like, slaps him in the face. And then, um, they're going through, and also, I love the reference to, like, the red shirts, it was like, it's just you, me, and these other two guys, and then all the two guys are in red shirts, and I, I think one of them had a gun, and he shot, and I was like, whoa, and they both almost, like, blasted themselves in the face, and I was like, that's a really good joke, because for those of you who don't watch Star Trek or are really familiar with the lore, anyone who wears a red shirt is dead like that's why they call red shirts like they just die in every episode anyone who's in a red shirt is just typically at least in the original star trek is just a random expendable person who just dies every episode it's like that person's in a red shirt you will never see them past this episode so that was a great reference to them but of course they get eaten by this random blob thing and then they find like some random person is like yeah we'll defeat the aliens and the aliens just blast them and that's the end of the series and they just die and Raph was like, how can you guys be laughing? Like, that's exactly what's happening to us. And they're like, ah, oh, you're, you're crazy. Like, don't freak out. It's just a cartoon. And then, of course, they end up going into this crazy battle because they get surrounded because um, the first gang of members goes to, like, these lizard people. And so then they end up teaming up to take them all out. And it just gets really crazy. It was a pretty cool fight sequence. Uh, Mikey was surprisingly cool with his old age. Like, he was doing, like, the most, like, actual ninja stuff still, which I thought was really interesting. Like, he was doing a lot of flips and kicks. Um, he was like mixing all the phrases, which I loved, but he was mixing Kawabunga, um, Gungalo, which I, I thought was really awesome that they did. They did like a full reference to that in the final one with, uh, Raph when he sets off the bomb, which I thought was great. But, um, but he was mixing those two and then, um, Buyukasha, so Mikey was mixing all three of the references together, or the phrases together. I was like, that's actually really awesome. Uh, Mikey was also in underwear. I don't know what that meant, but I noticed that, uh, with him being older and stuff. And he was super, super skinny. Um, but I was like, yeah, he's wearing underwear. I don't really know what to think about that 100%, but Mikey was wearing underwear underneath that poncho. But it was cool. They had a, a really decent fight sequence. Ultimately, the girl ends up getting kidnapped. Raph takes off to go after her. And he believes that everyone gets killed because uh, he dodges a missile while he's driving in the uh, Oscar Mayer Wienermobile, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. I don't know why they put that in there, but everyone's got like all the cool cars and stuff. And I'm like, they put these like insane mega wheels on the Oscar Mayer uh, Wienermobile, so I just thought that was really funny. But he dodges the missile, blows up the place, so he freaks out. I was like, I'm gonna assume that they aren't gonna get that dark and they actually killed everybody because that really would have made it sad. So I was like, I'm sure they'll be fine. Goes after her, ultimately, um, she's captured and then he goes in to try to save her. 
and he ends up getting captured and thrown into the arena, which I thought was a cool little sequence. You know, like, both the leaders of the gangs wanted to take him out, so they were like, all right, well, let's just, you know, typical villain stuff, let's just team up and take him down. But ultimately, he ends up beating them both. He rips the one dude's arm off who had the chainsaw, and he knocks the other dude out, and it's like, well, based off of this, you are officially the ruler of both these gangs now, and everyone's calling him, you know, Red Stripe. So I thought that was really cool. Of course, the first guy who had been chasing him since the beginning, he was like, I don't, I'm not going to follow these rules. I'm going to go back to my master. And I knew it was going to be Leo because they introduced, you know, everyone surviving and something like, well, I'm going to go back to my master and then, you know, we'll actually get this girl. We'll get the map and we'll find Oasis. So, you know, he takes off and I was like, it's definitely going to be Leo. And of course, Leo ends up being like the hulking evil one. Uh, they made it look super funny. I got to be honest, when it got to the final episode and... You know, everyone's back together and they're going, you know, they're headed towards Oasis and they go through, like, the main sequence. And, you know, they're, they're having, like, a crazy shootout and stuff. The lizard dude who ended up falling after Raph, he actually gets killed. He's just yelling Red Stripe and then he gets blended up in the thing. They go through their whole uh, combat sequence and then, of course, it comes down to Raph versus Leo, which I thought that was a perfect way to do it because, like, it's always going to be the two of them fighting. No matter how much the turtles are together, no matter what craziness happens... It will always come down to Raph versus Leo. And, you know, they're fighting and eventually he knocks his helmet off. And I was like, that just looks so weird. I thought his face would be changed, but he just looks weird. Like, he has, like, it was literally, like, a baby's face on this crazy monster's body. Because his face still looked, like, perfectly smooth and normal. Like, he still looked young. And that was the weirdest thing about it. Everyone else looked like they aged. You know, Mikey looked older and he was skinnier. Raph got older and, of course, he was bulkier. And for Leo, he was mutated, like, to an excessive amount and, like, you know, driven crazy. But his face was, like, perfectly shaped. He was, like, stuck with the teenage face with the monster body. And it was the funniest thing because, like, even his neck was huge. And then it would just be, like, shoop, and go this tiny little circle on his head. And it just looked so funny. And I was, like, it looks so weird and out of place that his face is so normal. Like, there was no marks or any scratches, none of that stuff. It was, like, the perfect turtle face. And I was like, that just looks weird on this giant hulked out body. There's like no difference in his face. It was so funny to me when they first showed it because it just looked weird. But ultimately, you know, Raph is not going to fight back against his brother. And he's able to kind of snap him out of it. And everything kind of works out fine. They end up finding Oasis there with, you know, uh, the girl. I totally can't remember her name. But it's the turtles and this girl. They find Oasis, which it looked like it was just like a giant pond. It was like the biggest, almost like the biggest swimming pool, really, because it was like a perfect uh, rectangle. And then there was like, you know, grass and stuff around it. And they end up finding it. Um, I thought there would be like other people there, maybe, or something like that. But it was like, it's just them and this girl. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. She's kind of like, you know, the younger new April. Like she even uses April's like motorcycle and stuff like that, which I was trying to remember. Um, have we seen that in the show? I, I was trying. I'm sure we've seen it. it had, we had to have seen that somewhere in the show. But I was like, I know April always has a motorcycle, but I feel like we haven't seen it in this version of the show. But I'm sure I'm wrong because I feel like I've seen her in, with the helmet on a million times, but I don't specifically remember her being on the motorcycle. So I'm sure we've seen it. But when I saw that, I was like, I can't pick out a specific moment in this series where we've actually seen April using her motorcycle. But like, that's a part of her character. Like, that's always that ends up becoming like her mode of transportation. So I thought it was cool. I don't know if it's been in this version of the series or not, or if it's just like, it must be, because it's Ninja Turtles, but I thought that was cool. Whether it's been in the series or not, that's that was just a cool reference to have that in there, but it was cool. You know, it was definitely, like, I love the combat, and ultimately I like the story of it, and the way it ends is really, really sweet, where they ultimately come upon Oasis, and then, um, you know, it, it ends and then it kind of pans up to the sky, and it's Splinter and the turtles, and they all end up taking a picture. I would have loved if it was everyone uh, taking a picture, at least all the heroes, or even like if it was just the main group of heroes, if it was the turtles, Splinter, Casey, April, and Karai. I would like Shinigami in there, but I've mentioned before, I just like Shinigami. Um, but if it was them, I thought it would have been even cooler because I'm like, you know, granted it would have made it sadder because I'm like, you know, we don't see anybody, so everybody's dead. But I was like, it would have been cool if they did that because, you know, it's Casey and April at least, you know, and then Karai is, of course, Splinter's daughter. It's just. It works. Like, I know it's Master Splinter and the Turtles, so it makes perfect sense to just have them. But I was like, with this being the series finale, you think they would, you know, at least somewhat reference that. I mean, it's not like Splinter was in there because he'd been dead forever. So, you know, just to have all of them together as, like, this, this family picture, I think, would have been really cool. But, of course, when you go to Turtles, the first thing that comes to mind really are the Turtles and then uh, Master Splinter. But it was really well done. Then they have, like, the ending thing, which is actually referenced to, like, the first issue of TMNT with like the old school drawing where it says this is for um you know it's basically for uh Eastman and Laird 
So I thought that was really cool. And in the comic, it was like, this is dedicated to like Jack Kirby and Frank Miller. So I was like, that's an awesome reference. That I didn't know I found that out today, but it was a good episode. Like I mentioned in the beginning though, it just sucks. Like canonically speaking, that's super depressing. <laughs> that's like the actual ending. Mutant Apocalypse, everybody's dead. So still a great story. I definitely enjoyed watching it. Um, I love the different styles, you know, for the characters. Like obviously Donnie's not even in his body anymore. He's a robot, but older Ralph, older Mikey, um, older, but mostly mutated uh, Leo. Definitely cool. I, I definitely enjoyed it for a series finale. It's definitely well done, without a doubt. It was just sad that it was like the post-apocalyptic future. Like this is the ending. It's not an alternate future or anything like that, unless they're secretly putting that in one of the other episodes we're going to watch later. It's like the actual ending. Everybody's gone. So it was like, huh, that's super depressing. But it was a good episode. Definitely um, an emotional, especially with it being like that specific story with like the post-apocalyptic future. Definitely super emotional as an ending to the series because I don't think it gets more emotional than the whole world is completely destroyed and you know, this is how the story ends for the turtles. So I don't think it can get more emotional than that, really. But it's definitely a good story, of course. I would love to know what you guys thought about this finale. So please, put your comments down in the comment section below. Uh, let me know your favorite parts about it, your least favorite parts about it. And it's crazy that I can say this during the series finale, but I do want to know um, what, you know, final arcs you guys are looking forward to the most. Um, I'm curious about the crossover thing. I think the Bebop and Rocksteady stuff is where the crossover takes place, so that's what I'm interested in the most, especially with them bringing the 80 shredder over because i mentioned before i want to know who does the voice acting for that because the original voice actor passed away a, long, uh, a few years ago so i'm really really curious about how that's going to play out but we'll love to know what you guys thought about the finale um everything especially like i said the nicktoons thing and what nick really did with the show i definitely want to know your thoughts on that and like i said i'll probably have a video for that up like maybe a week or two uh just to kind of get my thoughts together and figure out how exactly i want to do that but like i said i want to know what you guys thought about the series finale and what you guys are looking forward to for the other arcs that are, have yet to air. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.